say a rule of thumb, you know, uh, where you can put your focal point. And then we sometimes people call it the rule of third, okay? All right, so you divide this uh, paper into approximately nine equal portions, all right? And then you're going to uh, uh, locate your focal points either here, here, or here, or here, one of those uh, cross sections. Uh, you never, you know, put the uh, your focal point exactly on those areas, all right? So um, from that, uh, you know, point of view, okay? And then the, uh, we are going to, you know, locate the frogs, okay? So the frogs, we, we can use one or two frogs uh, to make a focal point. If, if you paint two frogs, usually, you know, I, pay, I put them overlapping, okay? So uh, let's um, do overlap uh, here. Actually, when I sketch this frog, I sketch on this side. But tracing paper, you can flip it over, you can see another side, uh, you know, uh, very clear, all right? So, so I like to, you know, put these uh, two frogs on this uh, edge, you know, on this uh, uh, focal point here, all right? Um, however, some people say, I want to put on this side, you know, uh, which is okay, but you cannot move it like this because, you know, they seems like acting toward this side. If you, you, you all arrange your two frogs here as a focal point, even though it's in one of the f uh, four uh, locations, uh, you're supposed to put them down. But, you know, it's, you know, there's not much space for them to move to. This situation I call it traffic jam, okay? Uh, same as here, you know. Um, uh, but you, you can put it on this side if you, your flock looking on that side, okay? If you put it up here, you know, actually it's better probably, you know, put it, uh, you know, uh, let them swimming down, you know, or sitting, looking down, so it creates more space here, okay? So this flock is going to be uh, a flock like, uh, uh, somewhat like uh, like uh, this kind of color, okay? This is a flock uh, uh, my friend uh, Sharon uh, took it uh, from her pond, and then it's a very beautiful color, so kind of greenish, yellow greens at the head, and uh, you know, gradually changing, gradually changing into kind of muddy color or benzene color, you know, with spots. Okay, so um, so we don't have the paint exactly the same, but we have some reference. All right. So uh, next, uh, since the you know we are going to paint the, the head with uh, green, so we are not going to paint green. We are, gonna, we are not make, mixing the green on the palette. Instead, we are just using uh, yellow. Put yellow f here first. Okay. Um, since we have, uh, you know, the color, uh, the, the water in the, on the body of the frog, okay, and the, the color blends. For instance, you know, you put your yellow here and blends in, and then the yellow catch the water and blend into other part of uh, the painting. I mean, the the frog, okay, All right. So, um, okay. Now I can use a, another brush, okay. Another brush. Uh, probably a uh, number uh, eight, okay, uh, round plus, and then um, yeah, um, I'm going to you know paint some green here. How do you make green? Okay, you just uh, get the blue color and put it here. So these two colors combine together and become green. Uh, have water um, on your on your floor, okay? I I'm going to spread a little uh, red color around here. You know this plant can be a little bit wet. Okay, or orangey. Okay, then spray a little bit of water. Okay. So the good idea is that uh, try not to use the same color uh, of the flock against the flock. See here, I have a purple color against the, you know, the flock. Okay, and then the, um, otherwise your 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 the color of the flock and the color of the background uh, look very much uh, the same. Okay. So it's not a good idea, okay? So leave some white like that, which is okay. This is a rock area. Okay, rocks does not have to be a certain color. You know, people think, some people think rock has to be, rocks has to be uh, um, blonde, you know? It's not necessary, okay? Um, here, okay, um, you know, I'm going to, this is kind of orangey. I don't want to get this orangey to here. So, so instead of orangey, I'm going to put some blue here blue color, okay, All right, so I'm going to borrow this color um, here, okay, I'm going to blow the colors um, from here down, indicate some of the, the roots of the plants, okay, before I, I do that, I'm going to splash uh, some more color here, okay, uh, 
three colors. We make it simple, okay? Okay, so you this way. And here is a sketch of, you know, enlarge of the shape of those plants. And then you don't paint those plants, actually. You use whatever local color there. Uh, but however, what you paint is, you know, between the, uh, you know, the background of the plant. Okay, you paint around it. Okay, so, and then you blend the colors out for your background color. Okay, so uh, gradually changing onto your background color, fade out into your background color. Okay, so which means here there's no edge on, the, on this side, no edge. So no edge in here, no edge here. Okay, so so you fill in you know the background between the plants, the leaves, the stems. Okay, so uh, and also outside here you define the shape, and then you you uh, blend the colors. But okay, the next thing I want to show you to do, you know, is the uh, the rocks. Okay. Uh, painting rocks, sometimes people have uh, difficulty to do it, okay? And then the, um, uh, I think I'm going to show you an easy way to do it, um, all right? Um, let's uh, start with uh, sketching some of the rocks, okay? Uh, if you have uh, no idea how they look like, let's uh, do some uh, um, potatoes, okay? Potatoes, Pota different shapes, you know. Um, so you uh, use two brushes to paint the rocks. Okay? One's for blending, one in, one is for uh, uh, coloring. Okay, you still use blue colors. Okay, all right. So you you always paint the rock behind. Okay, and then use you know the rock behind to define the shape of the rocks at the front. So this one is behind this one, behind this one, behind this one. So you blend the colors, blend the blue colors for that one. This one's behind this one. So you do the same thing. Okay. This one is behind this, behind this. Okay. Right. This one is behind this one. That's what I'm doing. I'm using colors similar to what uh, you know, uh, is uh, similar to the local color. Doing a little uh, half circle, or even more than half circle. So this is the blues color on the blues area. Okay, that uh, give you a little impression of the the bumpy skins. Thank you.